வணக்கம் த ரொலாண்டோ ஃப்ராக்சர் மே நாட் பி ஆஸ் காமன் ஆஸ் த பெனட் ஃப்ராக்சர் பட் இட் இஸ் டெஃபினெட்லி மோர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் சின்ஸ் இட் இஸ் மோர் சேலஞ்சிங் டு கெட் குட் ரிசல்ட்ஸ் பட் வி நீட் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஆல் அபவுட் திஸ் ஃப்ராக்சர் த மெக்கானிசம் பை விச் இட் அக்கர்ஸ் and the characteristics of the fracture before we try to understand the treatment options available and which sort of modality would be ideal for which type of fracture and we also need to understand the basic differences between the rolando fracture and the bennett fracture Rolando fracture was first described by Silvio Rolando in 1910. This fracture accounts for about 21% of fractures of the base of the first metacarpal bone. When Silvio Rolando described it first, he described it as a three-part fracture. 1, 2 and 3. It consists of a transverse component between the diaphysis and epiphysis. a longitudinal intraarticular fracture that divides the epiphysis into two fragments one volar and ulnar and the other dorsal and radial as a result of this there is a central depression of the articular surface though it was originally described as a three part fracture commonly speaking all intraarticular fractures with multiple fragments of the base of the first metacarpal can be classified as rolando type fracture patterns because the management of these fractures is going to be quite similar these fractures are the result of compressive forces acting along the axis of the metacarpal shaft when the trapezio metacarpal articulation is in a flexed position this typically happens in a closed fist injury when hitting another person or a wall when this force is applied the point of least resistance of the bone is the anteromedial margin of the base of the first metacarpal this obliquely detaches this is typically seen in a bennett fracture when the force is more there is a concomitant fracture of the stronger dorsolateral process that separates from the body of the bone this results in a rolando fracture when the same mechanism is applied but with a traumatic force of a greater extent multi fragmentary fractures result pain swelling and loss of function of the thumb are characteristic clinical features like in all fractures of the base of the first metacarpal bone so the clinical features are not enough for differentiating between rolando fractures bennett fractures and comminuted fractures though routine pa view lateral and oblique views of the hand will help to identify the fracture the roberts view or the true ap view and the bet view or the true lateral view will help to delineate the fractures better the description of these fractures is given in the video which can be accessed by clicking the icon above but in spite of these specialized x-rays we find that rolando's fracture appear deceptively benign on plain radiographs a ct scan may be helpful in assessing the comminution and the extent of the articular disruption This CT scan should be obtained with collimation and slice thickness between 0.5 to 1 mm complemented by multiplanar and 3D reconstructions. Having seen the characteristics of the Rolando fracture, let us now try to analyze the difference between the Rolando fracture and the Bennett fracture. The Rolando fracture is a comminuted articular fracture of the base of the thumb metacarpal. This comminution could consist of two or more segments. The Bennett fracture is an intraarticular fracture at the volar ulnar base of the thumb metacarpal. So there is only a single fracture line. Rolando fracture is a three or more parts fracture. The Bennett fracture is a two part fracture. The Rolando fracture can be classified as a Y T configuration or comminution. there is the bennett fracture is classified by the gedda classification the rolando fracture is less common than the bennett fracture and it has a worse prognosis than the bennett fracture let us first see what the aims of management of the rolando fracture are we must get an optimized range of motion of the carpo metacarpal joint or the trapezio metacarpal joint of the thumb to achieve this it would be ideal for stable fixation so that 
early mobilization can be started, but this is not possible in all the situations. Even if we are not able to provide optimal range of motion, it is very important to minimize the pain in the moving thumb. The range of options that we have for treatment of Rolando fracture are as follows. Closed reduction and thumb splinting or immobilization, closed reduction and percutaneous pinning, open reduction and internal fixation, distraction and external fixation or traction. The indication for closed reduction and splinting are extra articular fractures or minimally displaced two-part articular fractures that is the Bennett fractures with less than 1 mm displacement. So the role of closed reduction and thumb splinting is very minimal in Rolando fracture. However, if splinting is going to be done, first traction should be applied to correct the flexion deformity. This axial traction should be applied on the thumb and simultaneous pressure over the dorsal aspect of the basal diaphysis near the fracture. During the application of the cast, it is important to exert pressure over the dorsal aspect of the first metacarpal diaphysial base and from the palmar aspect over the first metacarpal head. In this position, the cast needs to be applied. Closed reduction and percutaneous pinning is indicated for Rolando fracture patterns with less than 1 mm of displacement or in comminuted fracture patterns not amenable for screw fixation. The technique of closed reduction and percutaneous pinning has been discussed in the previous video on management of the Bennett fracture. This gives a clinical example of a comminuted fracture of the base and mid shaft of the thumb metacarpal which has been managed with closed reduction and percutaneous pinning. The indications for open reduction and internal fixation are when there is more than 1 mm of displacement in intra-articular fractures which could be either the Bennett fracture or the Rolando fracture patterns or comminuted fracture fragments which are large enough and amenable for screw fixation. We need to remember here that metaphyseal and articular comminution is usually more than what is apparent on x-rays. These are best assessed with CT scan or traction x-rays. And it is important to completely analyze the fracture before planning the treatment schedule. To perform an open reduction and internal fixation with plate and screws, we need to first access the fracture for either the Y or the T-shaped patterns in the frontal plane that is which have a radial and ulnar fragments a straight dorsal approach is preferred whereas if the fracture pattern is in the sagittal plane with volar and dorsal fragments the radio palmar approach is preferred hence we need to understand the morphology of the fracture before planning the access incision after accessing the fracture Preliminary fixation of the articular fragments of the base of the thumb is done with pointed reduction forceps. This must be confirmed under direct vision and also using image intensification. A preliminary K wire may be inserted perpendicularly to the vertical fracture plane to stabilize the construct additionally. For fixation, a T shaped plate is best suited. A 2.0 mm locking compression plate if additional metaphyseal comminution is noted. If conventional non-locking plate is used, there will be a need for an additional bone graft, which can be harvested either from the radius or from the iliac crest. The length of the plate must be such that two screws can be fixed in the distal diaphyseal fragment. Contouring of the plate must be done both transversely and longitudinally. A 1.3 mm Rolando fracture hook plate is also available for fixing these fractures. However, if there is severe comminution with very small fracture fragments, there are two options available, external fixation and the method of oblique traction. External fixation is used for comminuted intra-articular fractures. Buschler et al. Describe the quadrilateral mini external fixation device 
placed between the thumb and the index metacarpal followed by limited open reduction with K wires or screws and a cancellous bone graft. The technique of oblique traction is also used for the management of comminuted intra-articular fractures. Though the technique of oblique traction through the thumb metacarpal was analyzed by Gelberman et al., it was originally described by Thoren in 1956. In his original article, he analyzed the different forces acting on this kind of fracture and felt that oblique traction through the metacarpal was the answer to stabilize all these forces and achieve good healing of the fracture. First, a 1 cm incision is made just distal to the abductor pollicis longus insertion and radial and volar to the extensor pollicis brevis tendon. A 1.5 mm K wire is drilled obliquely through the thumb metacarpal in a distal and ulnar direction with a slight volar tilt so that it exits in the thumb index finger web space. The proximal end of the pin is bent 90 degrees and the incision is closed. A forearm cast with a banjo outrigger is applied with exclusion of the thumb web and rubber band traction is maintained for 4 to 6 weeks. The complications of Rolando fracture and its management are stiffness and osteoarthritis. As expected, these complications are more in the multi-fragmentary forms. Since minimizing pain is a very important aim of management of the Rolando fracture, if there is persistent pain after operative management, no further intervention should be done for a minimum of 6 months. If pain persists even after this and there is radiographic evidence of articular incongruity, arthrodesis of the trapeziometacarpal joint is indicated. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about metacarpal fracture management and phalangeal fractures management. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery.